Golden Radio Hour. Where is everybody? Starring John Schneider with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for the Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Roger Mueller, Tom McElroy, Roderick Peoples, Doug James, Richard Hensel, Carl Amari, and Amber Lake. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Uh, get away from me. What? Where, where, where in the... When I woke up, I was sure somebody was watching me. I didn't know who it was, but I, I could feel someone very close by. I, I thought I could feel breath on my face, too, but it was only a, a breeze and a fly buzzing around my nose. I brushed it off and got up. I was outdoors, in a field, morning. The sun wasn't very high yet. I felt okay, not too hot, not too chilly. The only problem was, where am I? How the heck did I get here? I must have been dreaming. About what? Don't ask me, because I couldn't tell you. When's a dream not a dream? Whatever this one was, it must have been a doozy, because the last thing I remember is, well, that's, that's just it. See, I, I don't remember much. Much. Make that anything. So, where to begin? As far as I can tell, this is the beginning. I, I, I mean, not the beginning, whenever that was, the... Big Bang, billions of years ago, out in the middle of space or something, but it'll, it'll come back to me. It will, and all I have to do is give it some time. So bear with me out there, whoever you are. The one who is watching me, probably. I can promise you one thing, though. This isn't going to turn out to be one of those times when you only think you woke up, but you didn't because you're still asleep. I hate dreams like that. Now, I know what's real and what isn't, so do you. And this is definitely real. The mosquito that, that bit me, for instance, right on the nose, the, the bite is starting to itch like crazy with the sun beating down, but guess what? I'm clean out of calamine lotion. Wait a minute. I know this road, don't I? It looks like a lot of other roads, asphalt, telephone poles. I, I must have been driving and my car quit on me and I started walking to town and I ended up spending the night out here. But if that's what happened, where's my car? Somebody could have dumped me out, I guess, after they hit me on the head and robbed me. And that's why I don't have a wallet and why I don't remember anything. Temporary amnesia. I hope I don't have a concussion. <laughs> that could be why I've got this headache. There must be a sign along here somewhere. Pretty soon I'll see a house, a town, something, or someone will come along. They have to. And when they do, I'll just 
stick out my thumb and hitch a ride. Don't have much of a choice. One thing, though, will somebody please tell me where is everybody? A French philosopher once said, hell is other people. And for some, that may be true. Most of us need time alone, away from the pressure of everyday life. If you live in a city with noise and crowds and traffic, that's easy to understand. But what about the other side of the coin? We also need companionship, someone to talk to, a friendly voice and a familiar face. It's a dilemma that goes back to Adam, who found the Garden of Eden unbearable on his own. Enter one male human being. Age 31, height approximately 5 foot 11 inches. His name isn't Adam, though exactly what it is, where he is, and what he's doing here, even he doesn't know. At the moment, these questions constitute the central mystery of his life. But it's a beautiful day, and he's on a road that's bound to lead somewhere, back to the beginning or to a destination not yet in sight. The journey will take him through shadows as well as sunlight and you are hereby invited to go along. Be forewarned, however. This is an excursion to an unknown land, a walking trip without benefit of compass or roadmap through a realm called the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, Where Is Everybody? Starring John Schneider with Stacy Keach as your narrator. There we go. Roadside diner. Just what I need. Well, what do you know? Still got a couple of dollar bills in my pocket. Some change. That ought to do it. Looks like I got the place to myself. Service here. Hey, it, is this jukebox loud enough for you? I mean, can you hear it all right? Hey! Somebody want to turn this thing down a little over here? All right, all right, I'll do it. Pretty early for this kind of noise. Gotta be a volume control somewhere. Well, maybe it's on the back. If I can slide it out from the wall. Easy now. Oh, look, I like music the same as the next guy, and all I'm looking for is the knob. There. Now, the question is, who played the song in the first place? Somebody had to put a coin in the slot. Who's here? Somebody go outside for a minute? Is that it? Say, can, can you hear me? I see there's a town up the road. What's the name of it? Anybody know? Anybody? Like in the kitchen? Hey, you in there, I asked you a question. What, what is the name of the town? Hello? Cook must be outside catching a smoke. Guess what? You got a customer out front. You hear me? Cash customer! Meanwhile, don't waste so much water. I think, uh, ham and eggs. Yeah, traveler special. Eggs up and soft, hash browns, coffee black. Customer waiting! Take your time. Me, I'm in no hurry. One cigarette left. Anybody got a light? I didn't think so. Where do you keep the matches? Hold, hold on, I see them. By the register, right next to the clock. Whoops. Didn't mean to knock it on the floor, just trying to get a match. Here, I'm picking it up, see? What time is it anyway? 6.15. That can't be right. Cracked. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I broke it. I'll pay for it, honest. 
Of course, I'll have to send you the money. I'm a little low on funds right now. All I got on me is $2.85. Good old American money, isn't it? Yep, U.S. coins and currency. Well, well, we got that much settled. I'm, I'm an American. There's a little question about my identity, though. L let me let me put it to you this way: I'm I, I'm not sure who I am. <laughs> Isn't that a laugh? But uh, but I've got two dollars and eighty-five cents, and I'm hungry. with it. If nobody's gonna help me, I guess I'll just have to take care of myself. I'll see you later, everybody. I'll even do you a favor. The sign on the door says, open. Let me turn it around for you. Closed. Yeah, that's more like it. Truth in advertising. I'm gonna wake up any minute now. I know I'm gonna wake up. I, I, I wish, uh, I wish there'd be a noise or something a great a great big noise to make sure I do but it's so quiet around here it's weird okay okay if I gotta make it myself here goes nothing uh, <clears throat> yes sir that's my baby no sir don't mean maybe yes sir that's my baby now Oakwood, huh? That's a nice name for a town, real homey. The only question is, where, where is it and where's everybody who lives here? Gotta be quite a few, every kind of store you could think of. Drugstore, grocery, soda shop, post office, courthouse. Looks like a regular town to me. There must be a school around here too. Where's all the kids? What? Where's that coming from? Church. Over there! What, what'd I do? I, I imagine I heard it? No, no, it was it was real, all right, and that means somebody rang it. Knew I wasn't alone. I'll, I'll go to the church and... Wait a minute, what's that? You there. Miss, yeah, you in the truck. I'm over here. <laughs> Thank God, look. Miss, I, I wonder if you could do me a favor, just a, li a little one. You gotta help me. Now, I don't want you to think I'm nuts or anything. I mean, it, it's nothing like that. I just, I don't seem to remember who I am. I, I, I know, I know, but it's it's true. It's, it's crazy, huh? I, I looked all over, but I haven't seen anybody around. Not anybody. I guess it's too early or something. There hasn't been a single solitary soul except you, not one. It's a real oddball thing, but I, I woke up this morning and, well, I, d I didn't exactly wake up, not in bed or, or anything. I, I just sort of found myself out there off the road. Real nice, you, you know what I mean? And now I got a sore back from sleeping on a rock. <laughs> so listen, it's, it's, it's amnesia, right? Isn't that what they call it? Yeah, yeah, that that's it. Amnesia. See, I, I don't remember a thing, and I couldn't find anybody to ask till now. You're the first person I've seen. The only one. Look, I, I don't want you to get spooked or anything, but could you tell me, is, is there a doctor around here? You know, just a, just a regular doctor, so I can get a checkup and find out what's wrong, because I think I'm sick. Miss? Miss, what's the matter? Can't, can't you hear me? You gotta be able to. The windows rolled down. Wait, what's the matter? Hey! You're on! It came off and... You're not even a real woman. You're a... You're a dummy! What's it say on the truck? Resnick's department store mannequins. Is that all? A, a bunch of mannequins? Here, get off the horn. Sit up straight. That's the way. Uh, here, here's your arm back. I'm very sorry, madam. My profound apologies. I can assure you that 
At no time did I mean to disturb you. As a matter of fact, I've always had a thing for quiet women. <laughs> Get what I mean, babe? <laughs> Here's a kiss for that cute little turned-up nose. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I can't stick around and talk. I got a very important appointment. I'll see you in the funny papers, and don't you take any wooden boyfriends. Anybody here? A store with lots of clothes store, but nobody to buy them. Only more dummies. Oh, I'm sorry, lady, I didn't mean to bump you like that. Say, was that your sister outside in the truck? I thought so. You know how I could tell? Because you look exactly alike. <laughs> no, no, I, I can't use a new handbag today. No, no underwear either. Just... Does this store even have a men's department? Sportswear? How about fishing poles? No? Too bad. See, I got nothing to do today, so I thought I'd go fishing. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, I'll catch you later. Let's see. What other kind of stores they have on this street? Whatever they are, I bet they're all empty as a tomb. Some kind of ghost town. Where'd they all go? To the moon? And they didn't even leave a note. Some manners. Well, I guess I'll just... Hold on. Is that what I think it is? It is. A phone booth. Just what the doctor ordered. It even works. We're in business. Operator, are you there? Come on. Operator. Hi, operator. Oh, you're beautiful. Let me tell you. Listen, I don't know who I am or where I am. Oak Oakwood. Yeah, that that's it. I I must be sick or something, and and, and I need help fast. I, I want to call. Uh, what what number? What is what is it now? Uh, I need a number, and I can't remember any. Get get. get Get me anything. Anyone, anywhere. I, I don't care who it is. Get, get, get me your supervisor, all right? Please dial the number now. This is a recording. A recording? Oh, that's just great. Never mind, operator. I'll look in the phone book. Here, A, Abel, Adams, Ackerman, Albright, Allen, B. Arnold. Where do you all live? Inside this book? Why aren't you on the street? B Baker, Belden, Biltmore, Botsford, Bradbury. B Tell me something, gang. Don't you ever go out for a stroll, shopping, work? You do have jobs, don't you? If you don't, then who's watching the store? For that matter, who's watching anything? How's that? Any number of them. Any, any number at all. I'll, I'll, I'll take my chances. Just connect me with a real, live, human being. It can be in Timbuktu for all I care. Well, you want more coins, is that it? you have reached is out of order. Please make sure you are dialing correctly. Give me my coins back and I will. Hey, give me my money back. Give it to me! What kind of lousy phone company is this? Okay, all right, who's the wise guy? Who locked the door? Very funny. This is beautiful, trapped in a phone booth like a goldfish. Okay, you got me. Here I am. Everybody come see, that's it. Joke's over. Somebody want to give me a hand? How about it? No? And you ask for it. Oh! Oh, now I'm bleeding. Thanks a lot. For nothing. Some joke. I know you're out there watching me. I can feel your eyes. Well, whoever you are, I'm gonna find you. And when I do, you're gonna pay. You're all gonna pay, but good. Oak 
Lockwood City Bank. That's an idea. I feel like making a withdrawal. Hi. You got a customer out here? I'd, I'd like a loan. Yeah, that's it. About, oh, a hundred thou. Maybe more. <laughs> I don't know how long I'll be stuck in this jerkwater town. Better make it five or six. Oh, how about eight hundred thousand dollars? That ought to hold me for a while. <laughs> What's the matter? Everybody on a lunch break? No sweat. I'll slip in behind the counter myself. Simple little transaction. Be a little short, though. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. I'll take whatever you got. Generous of you, mighty generous. I just won't put it all in one pocket in case somebody robs me. I better get some coins while I'm at it. A few rolls, and I'm out of here. I got that, that feeling again. This feeling somebody's watching, trying to trap me. What? Open the gate. Where are you? Who's watching? There! Now I thought so! A TV camera on the wall. Pretty clever. Would you mind turning the alarm off, please? It's too piercing. Hey, you! Whoever's watching through that thing, turn it off! Or I'll do it for you! Now let's try that again. One more roll of quarters coming up. The pitcher winds up. He throws! <laughs> there! Who said you could take my picture anyway? Nice. Two balls on the break. Now all I gotta do is run the table. Piece of cake. Eight ball, anybody? I'll cover all bets. <laughs> all right, all right, that's enough. Time out. How about a cigar? They gotta have cigars around here. Two for a dollar, huh? Pretty good. I always like an expensive cigar. Hey, how about the rest of you guys? Anybody wanna smoke? Oh, I forgot. You're invisible. Well, I'll light up for you. You get the idea? Always wanted to do this. Light a cigar with a hundred dollar bill. Hmm. Now that's what I call great taste. No big deal. <sighs> Hold on. Where can I get a drink around here? Hey, wait up, fellas. I'll be back in a minute. And nobody touch the cue ball. A chocolate ice cream soda with three scoops and a straw. <laughs> That's what I like. Anybody mind if I smoke in the drugstore? <laughs> I didn't think so. Well, I'll just set it down on the counter. Oh, delicious. Okay, what else do I need? Sunglasses, magazines, books. Yeah, a book. Books are good. Pick up a paperback to read in case I get bored. The last man in the world, huh? I wonder what this one's about. An atomic war, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think I read it before. Or did I? Eh, better take it anyway. Here's for the soda in the book. Yo! Post office! Got any mail for me today? Might help if I could tell you the name. Uh, how about John Q. Smith, Anytown, USA? No? Check again. Please, Mr. Postman. Deliver the letter, the sooner the better. Oh, relax, I'm not gonna go postal on you. Just give me some stamps. In case I think of somebody to write. Where is that coming from? Across the street? WGBN, the voice of the Midwest. Well, what do you know? This is where they broadcast from, right here in good old Oakwood. 
I know this station. I used to listen to it all the time. Never knew where they were. Do not enter when the red light is on. I don't think anybody will mind while the record's playing. It really is a record. Look at that. Look at old-fashioned vinyl on a turntable. I th think I used to have this album. Oh, oh, excuse me. Let's start it over again. Somebody left a cigarette in the ashtray, still burning. Who? Who's here? The DJ? I remember the DJ on WGBN, Vern Stevenson. Yeah, that, that was his name, playing nothing but the best. Where are you, Vern? Can you see me? The booth's empty, but somebody can hear me. I know it. I feel it. Attention, listeners, all you... People out in Radio Land, we interrupt this broadcast for a special announcement. We're all alone here, and we need to hear from you, so call in your requests. The number is... Well, you 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 know the number. L look it up. Just ask the operator for WGBN 1060 on the dial. The first caller wins a, a, a free lunch on the house, courtesy of me. You know me, don't you? If you do, call in and tell me, will you? Because I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering at the moment. Is anybody out there? Anybody at all? Congratulations! Hi. Th thanks, thanks for calling. Thanks a lot. You've been selected to receive a free all-expense-paid vacation to deep space. What are, what are you talking about? This is an automated call from Amatex, Inc. to a selected few homeowners like yourself. All you have to do is complete a brief survey. If you'd like to continue in English, please press 1. Or Spanish, press 2. Forget about it! Wait, wait a minute, the phone works. It works. All I need is a number. Any number. How do I get an outside line? Extension 1. Extension two. None of the buttons work. Come on, I'm trying to make a call. Three o'clock and still nothing. It feels like a Sunday, the longest one in history. I wonder if the movie theater's open. Why not? Maybe they got a matinee, a double feature, Pride of the Air Force and The Loner. <laughs> now that I gotta see. One, please. Oh, I get it. Self-service. Huh? That's okay. I'll just reach in and take a ticket. Keep the change. That's it, everybody. Good timing. Cartoon's over. Okay, Mr. Projectionist, you can roll the feature now. Ladies, please remove your hats. Shh. No talking. Anybody care if I put my feet up? <laughs> That's what I thought. Look at those planes, will ya? U.S. Air Force, go! Air Force, Air Force! Hey, I'm Air Force. That's it. You hear me? I remember that much. I'm in the Air Force. Can anybody hear me? You, up in the projection booth. You got an Air Force man in the house. Hey! Nobody here. Then who is running the picture? At least I got the first part of it. I was in the Air Force. If I could just remember what happened after that. What 
was it a, a war, a, a bomb, or or something? That must have been it, a bomb. But if there was, it would have destroyed everything, and everything still here, except for the people. What kind of sense does that make? Fresh popcorn. Who put it on? Nobody. That's who. It doesn't add up. No way. Phony butter. The smell's making me sick. Where's the men's room? Uh, I can't take this anymore. It's wearing me down. Just look at me. Look at the face in the mirror there. Buddy, I wouldn't know you. You'll forgive me. The face is familiar, but the name escapes me. See, I got a little problem here. You know what it is? I'm in the middle of a nightmare that I can't wake up from, and you're part of it. You and the ice cream and the cigar, the phone booth, the mannequin, this whole town, wherever it is, whatever it is, I... I, I just... I just remembered something else. Scrooge said it. You you remember Scrooge, pal? Oh, not Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge, what he said to the ghost of old Marley. I must have learned it in school. I think it goes like this. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an undone potato. There's more of gravy than of grave about you. Get it? That's what you all are. You're what I had for dinner last night. You must be, but now it's the next day and I'd like to wake up. I've had it. And if I can't wake up, at least I'd, I'd like... I'd like to find somebody to talk to. That's all. <laughs> is... Is that too much to ask? I guess it is. Me? I'm gonna have some popcorn. Plain. But I tell you true. If I don't find somebody today, you hear me? If I don't, I'm checking out of this world one way or the other. I'll get a gun, or, or whatever it takes, count on it. That's it, then. I sat through both movies, but it didn't help. No more than the drugstore, the pool room, the radio station, none of it. All one big, fat joke. Give me my money back. Here it goes. Give it to me. Oh. What a lousy phone company is this? Thanks a lot. Where are you? Who's watching? I'm in the middle of a nightmare that's that I can't wake up from. No! It's too much! Make it stop! Please! I need a gun. And one bullet. If nobody will help me, I'll have to do it. Where can I get a gun? The police station, that's it. Hello? No, what's the use? Calling all cars, calling all cars. This is an all points bulletin. Unknown man in town. Now infiltrating the police station. Suspicious looking character. Probably wanted by the FBI. Presently unarmed, but not for long. <laughs> all units return at once and bring your guns. He needs one. Anything. 45, 38, police special, Smith and Wesson, even a 22, it doesn't matter. Just something that'll do the job. Hot coffee. That's very considerate of you, I gotta say. It smells mighty fine, but no dice. It'll take more than that to get straight. There. I knew it. Shotguns all locked up tight. Safety first, boys. You don't know who might come wandering in here. <laughs> well, when all else fails, use a little elbow grease. 
Remington 3030 over and under shelves, right here. Now, where am I going to do it? I don't want to splatter my brains all over the front desk. <laughs> hey, what's back there? Jail cells. Perfect! Sit right here on the cot and... How? I, I can't reach the trigger if I put the muzzle under my chin. Wait! Shoes off! I can reach it with my toe. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy cried, wee, 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 all the way home. Oh, no. You, wait a minute. You can't lock me in here. I can't stand to be locked up. I've got a thing about it. Wait. No. You, you, you can't do this to me. I'm trying to finish it for you. What more do you want? Give me a chance to do it my way, please! 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 It's time to wake up! Time to wake up! That's it! Are you sure? Help him! He's had it! Alright, clock him and mark the time. Now get him out of there! Squad, release the subject! On the devil! Yes, sir! Careful with the electrodes. Remove the tape from his forehead and chest. Oh. It's all right, Major. You're right. Get a stretcher. Medics, over here. Now watch his hand. He, he cut it on one of the dials inside. What? what? How is he otherwise? He's all right considering. Delusions of some sort. I guess that's it. He's coming out of it now. Oh, fine, fine. Did you get all your data recorded? Yes, sir. Every bit of it. Uh, did you get him clocked? Yes, sir. All right. How long? 484 hours, 36 minutes. That long? I'll compile all the data for you. Yeah, good. And I'd, I'd like to have a look at his reaction chart, too, hour by hour. Uh, what about the press, sir? The press? You said you'd see them. They've been waiting in shifts. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to cut it short. I want to talk to Ferris. Yes, sir. The General will now give you a statement. Sir. Do you consider the test run a success? Very much so. You mean there were no problems? I didn't say that, but nothing we can't handle. Uh, Major Ferris has been in that box, six feet by five feet by five feet high, for something in the neighborhood of 484 hours, which is roughly equivalent to our deep space mission before Rendezvous. But we've had flights longer than that before. No, no, not solo, and not in a capsule that small. It's a one-man mission in a nose cone too small for him to stand up or move around. They call it sensory deprivation. Isn't that right, Doctor? Yes. You see, gentlemen, the human body, and more importantly, the human mind, isn't ready for conditions of extreme confinement. It's a new experience. Even with isometric exercises, music, optical diversion through his visigoggles, the body and brain react as if he's in severe isolation, which he is. But man isn't a hibernating animal. We're not built that way. You might say that evolution hasn't kept pace with technology, so we have to adapt ourselves in new ways. Within limits, of course. That's what the flight simulations are about. To map those limits and see if we're ready. Then this was a simulated trip to the new 10th planet. Is that right? For all intents and purposes. Why not just send up an unmanned probe? Because our exploration platform is already in orbit there. And what we need now is to man it within a reasonable flight time, even with new, faster propulsion systems. As you know, there are still problems with suspended animation, problems we hadn't anticipated. Such as? The revival methods, ice crystals in the blood and so forth. I'll make a background report available if you need it, gentlemen. Thank you. What were those wires attached to them? Electrodes. All of his reactions have been charted and graphed. Respiration, heart, blood pressure. What happened to him toward the end? Just before he pushed the button or whatever it was, we heard him shouting inside. Sounded like he was screaming. What happened to him was that he cracked. Doctor? We assume hallucinations of some sort based on the voice recorder. It's a common trick of the brain when there's not enough sensory input. 
So you see, there's a very real reason why humans can't bear to be alone. Solitary confinement is a tough sentence, whether it's the Garden of Eden or deep space. There may be a practical reason for human contact, even for love, a kind of survival mechanism to remain sane. How bad did he crack? I'll tell you something, gentlemen. You spent two and a half weeks all by your lonesome on your back in a five-foot square box without ever hearing a human voice other than your own. And I'll give you especially good odds that your imagination would run away with you, too. Just as his obviously did. General, I'd like to know, if I could ask you, our readers are wondering... Yeah, that's enough for now. Thank you. Captain Grant will have a press release drawn up. Should be ready in about uh, an hour. Thank you all for waiting so patiently. Last question, General. How did you know when he was ready to come out? He asked. There are several buttons and switches inside. Each one controls a simulated function for flight. Oxygen, fuel, temperature, and so forth. And the last button. Which was? Abort. When he had all he could take, when he had to get out, that's what he pushed. Or pounded with his fist. And now, gentlemen, good day. How do you feel, son? I feel much better, sir. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Nothing to be sorry for. He did splendidly. Listen, tell me something, Ferris. What was it like? Where did you think you were? Someplace I don't want to visit again. A, a town. A town without people. And you finally had to get out of that town, didn't you? I sure did. What was the matter with me? I went off my rocker, huh? It's a kind of nightmare, Ferris that your mind manufactured for you to explain what you were going through. Then we don't have it licked yet, the trip, I mean? Not today, we don't. And maybe not tomorrow, but we will. I'm sure of it. You see, Ferris, we can feed the stomach with concentrates. We can supply recreation for the eyes and ears. We can pump oxygen in, waste materials out. But there's one thing we can't simulate, a basic need, man's hunger for companionship. That's the one barrier we haven't licked yet. The barrier of loneliness. I don't need this thing. Better get a thorough physical first. Okay, okay but I, I can walk the rest of the way. Next time it won't just be a box and a hanger, will it? No, Mike. Next time you'll really be alone. And tell the men up there. Tell them next time. It won't be a dream. Next time, it'll be real, and I'll be joining them, and so will a lot of others, one by one. Tell them to hang on for a while longer. Help is coming. It's on the way. <laughs> what a remarkable young man. Mm. Yes, he is. Really quite remarkable. The barrier of loneliness, the desperate palpable need of the human animal to be with his own. For up there, beyond the vastness of the sky, in the void that is space, is an enemy known as isolation. It sits among the silent stars, waiting with the patience of eons in the twilight zone. We'll return to the twilight zone in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe.